Hey everybody, welcome to another brand new episode of the 7 Cents Cosmo Podcast. I am Simon, and today I'm going to finally review the Knights of the Zodiac movie. Now, I got a lot to say about it. Um, I watched it on Thursday, May May 11th, a uh, day before uh, the actual US release date, and I had to think about it a little bit. I didn't want to rush through the my own review, I want to think about the movie just a little bit more before I talk about it. And enough time has passed, so here are my thoughts. Before I start the review, I just want to let everyone know that there will be spoilers. So if you have not watched the movie yet, please stop now, watch the movie if you are interested in watching the movie, and then come back to this review. Right off the bat, uh, it's better than Dragon Ball Evolution, okay? So it's, it's definitely a step up. Dragon Ball Evolution was just terrible. I think we could all agree on that. Um, but it's not as good or great as Alita Battle Angel. And Knights of Zodiac is a very mid to decent, somewhere in between that. I can't say it's like a full decent movie, but I can't really say it's a it's a horrible, bad movie. It's very mid to mid decent. I don't know that very in between. Uh when I watched the movie. You know, as someone who's been a Saint Seiya fan since, you know, I was a kid, I I knew what I was getting myself into, so I had very low expectation of the movie. I think that really helped in a way for me to kind of look at this movie in a different perspective rather than knowing that it's not going to be a one-to-one adaptation of either the manga or even the anime. Um, so I accepted that fact. Old school, OG Saint Seiya fans will not like this. Uh... I think if even say say fans are open to the idea of watching the movie, they might not like it either. Um, I think general audiences will probably just watch this and think of it like a it's a very average popcorn flick, but very forgettable. If you're a general audience member, I think. I think it's just something that you could just watch one time and you know, you probably won't remember it. Uh you know, say say fans like us that did watch it will probably remember a little bit more. Uh, whether you liked it or not, you'll still remember this movie. So moving on, and this time I want to talk about the pros. What I actually liked about the movie. So right off the bat, I do like the opening sequence and where we see uh, Sagittarius, Capricorn, uh, Sagittarius carrying baby Athena. And that part was pretty amazing. And we have the narration. We hear um, Keto talking about the little history of the knights and you know, Athena and then how he was chosen uh, to take care of young Athena. And I kind of wish there was like a scene where he's actually carrying the baby rather than just him talking about it because it's just like, okay, why are you taking care of him all of a sudden? So I was like, it doesn't really set that up pretty well enough. I think um, that was a kind of a missed opportunity. Uh, I think the two characters that really stand out to me in this movie is, uh, Sienna and Seiya. Sometimes when, especially when they first met, you know, that interaction between those two, you know, they're, they're bickering, butting heads. And it kind of reminded me of, uh, episode 102 from the anime, you know, they were kind of butting heads in, in that episode. And I was watching it, I was watching the movie and they're like, oh, wow, this really kind of remind me of that episode when, you know, Seiya comes back from Greece with the cloth and then kind of talking about this his sister and that scene right there and you no know, just maybe the bickering what they're arguing about is a little bit different so did remind me just a bit tad of the anime uh the fight scenes were great i think the choreography the action you know the say of fighting um pretty much every action scene i had no problems with they all look pretty darn good uh the fight between Seiya and nero that was pretty cool. Wish it was a little bit longer. And I think I really like you know, Seiya's motivation. And I know McKinney did a great job in really portraying Seiya. You, know, you see, you know, the motivation, what is Seiya's motivations to, like, what's his purpose? And his purpose throughout the whole movie was trying to find sister. And then later on, saving Sienna. And really, in between those those two uh, stories, you know, you can see him. He never gets gives up, even in the the cage fighting sequence. He never gives up. <laughs> he, you know, even though he got his butt kicked by, you know, Cassius or Cassios, you know, and he 
still didn't give up. He did run away, but you know, he <laughs> he still didn't give up, at least in trying to fight him. So I think, you know, it also establishes that he's been still trying to find his sister, even though, you know, he lost his sister. They got separated when he was a kid. Now he's like a grown up. He's still trying to find his sister, Patricia. I think my favorite scene when it comes to Seiya, it's not even, you know, the the training scene, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but it's really that one scene when he interacts with his younger self. Uh, I feel like that was a moment where he finally kind of forgave himself for not being able to save his sister. So that will kind of like give him motivation to even be better, you know, to never give up. So I think that was a good moment because that was like kind of a, his mental block to becoming the Pegasus Knight. So I think that was a nice scene between older Seiya and young Seiya. Like I mentioned, Seiya uh, getting trained with Marin. Uh, the training sequences was pretty cool. And it reminded me a lot, not just bits and pieces of the anime, you know, where he's breaking a stone with his hand, but even some of the first pages from the manga itself, you know, because I think in the anime, it didn't really show those two, those couple of pages at the beginning of the manga in uh, volume one. And it kind of show a little bit more with Seiya and Marion Strange. So I think it's like a little mixture from the manga and then the anime. Um, so it reminded me of those two parts. One from the manga and one from the anime. And then the part where Seiya, uh, Seiya gets to wear his cloth, finally his armor. Uh, I like that uh, the first cloth that he wore. That transformation and, and like you hear the theme song, the Pegasus Meter Punch theme song. A variation of it. And then that was pretty cool. And again, it, it reminded me, it's like a mixture of the version one cloth that you see in the anime and the manga, and then his training gear in the anime. So it was like a little mixture of that. It looks more, maybe a little bit more towards the uh, anime's training gear rather than more of the V1 uh, cloth from the manga a bit. So that was a pretty nice touch, a nice little callback. Um, but for me, the theme of not giving up, it's always been present there between Seiya and I think that's what I really like about the movie, that part of the movie. And also about, you know, not, you know, destiny is not written in stone. It's like, these are not really new concepts in movies. And they, you know, these, uh, these topics have been done way often in different movies. But I just like that, the fact that Saint Seiya, there are elements in it from Saint Seiya, such as not giving up, uh, Destiny, you no, know, those are the two things that I remember from Saint Seiya. They didn't cover anything about Brotherhood because they're just not enough characters to start a Brotherhood yet, at least. So, like that, and I like Sienna's Sienna's struggle with her own destiny. You know, not really sure how what will happen when she does become Athena, you know, or if she's gonna be destroying the world because of the prophecy. Not a big fan of that that part of that story, but you know, they are adapting this from that Netflix version of Saint Seiya that we've been watching or they've been airing. Um, definitely the Seiya and Athena moment, right? Um, the final moment where Seiya's trying to save Sienna, but Athena's already taken over the bo her body. And that part where Seiya's like struggling to get through to Sienna and Sienna kind of like speaking to Seiya, you know, and like you know, he... Say I hear Sia's voice, but it's really Athena telling her, it's like, you know, you have to destroy Athena. And right at that moment when he's about to, he didn't want to do it. He was, he didn't want to give up on Sienna. On Sienna. See, the, the theme of not giving up is still there. So he's he wants to find another way. And kind of like talks, talks to Sienna and like try to get her to wake up and take control of these powers. So I think that was a nice moment. So those are the things I, I did absolutely I absolutely like about the movie. Now here are some of the, the things that I don't like about the movie. Besides Seiya and Sienna, I, pretty much all the other other characters are very underwhelming. I'm like I I would call them like throwaway characters like Allman. Yeah, cool. He's playing the father figure. Yeah, okay. Didn't care for him. Garad definitely did not care at all. I mean, I just could not find that character interesting at all didn't find that character interesting in the netflix version cassios yeah no throwaway character just another guy that 
a muscle guy that needs needs to fight. You know, just like eh, whatever. Mylock, yeah, he did some cool stuff, but there's really not much to reveal about it. I want to know all the more backstories. Like, oh, okay, so you're helping Almond. Why? It's just like there's 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 really not much, and I wish there were more to it. But you know, given there's so many of these different characters that are being introduced, that they're introducing, it's just like. Yeah, I understand. It's just too difficult. Um, Marin was cool. I know I do like, again, the training sequence between her and Saya. What I don't understand is, you now Saya asked her, Saya asked her, I was like, oh, uh, like, what are you doing here on this island? And I don't know why, why Marin's an, an island. Is that supposed to be some island that's part of Sanctuary? Not that I don't know if Sanctuary exists in this movie, but it's just like she's just an island. And then, like, she kind of gives, like, this cryptic answer of why she's on this island it's like oh gosh it's such a cop out i hate that it's just so you know i like Marin's action sequences the training but really just the you know just trying to get just trying to see say and her talk about you know why are you here it's just like eh. it's just i don't know i just felt like i wish there was more to elaborate uh the cloths the armors didn't work for me at all. Um, I was already hesitant with it from the trailers. And just looking at the big screen, it just looks so weird. Um, if I had to choose between Phoenix and Pegasus, Fe the Phoenix cloth, the Phoenix arm look a little bit better. You know, the Pegasus one was just like, <laughs> it just looks weird. Especially every time when they do a close-up of Seiya's fist when he's wearing that armor. It just looks so bulky and weird. Um, I actually prefer... You know, the first cloth or the first armor that Saya wore during that transformation transformation sequence. I wish there was more to that. I just hate that part where it got cut so short after he puts on his first cloth. Because all of a sudden he gets overwhelmed by these visions. I think they call it Cosmo Visions. Like, oh my god, that was that was dumb. <laughs> it's just like and then he sees the past and he remembers that all men and Garad or all men did help Garad like kidnap her his sister and then like he gets mad and starts fighting Marin, and then he just you know he didn't win and then the cloth is like gone from him so we didn't get to see that verse first version that much <laughs> because it got cut short by that cosmo vision and his anger so that that was a uh, disappointment i wish we could see more of that cloth uh oh, i think the most disappointing character is Nero Riki. Um man, the way Diego, the actor Diego Tanoko like, explain or describe the character's motivations, like, yeah, he gets his character. You know, that's his motivation. Right. You have to give them purpose in the story. And if you give them purpose, that'll really drive all of it, the character's actions, and it'll take care of the why. The why of why he's doing everything, right? But that's what I really try to do with Nero. And, uh, you know, again, it went back to who Nero is as a person, uh, his past, what he wants, and uh, his, his dedication in com completing this mission, right? He believes that if he fails at his mission, he's not just failing himself, he's failing his little brother, Shun, who we'll talk about for the sequel, maybe. <laughs> and uh, he's failing all of humanity and he's failing, he's failing the whole world essentially, right? And I think we could all relate to that. Sometimes we, we come up with these decisions and choices and we don't know if it's for the better good. But we think it is and, you know, in our hearts we hope it is. And, you know, that's entirely up to, to how you see everything, the lens of, of perception, perspective. Uh, but, you know, whether Nero is right or wrong, you guys will all have to decide in theaters May 12th. And you see none of that in the movie. <laughs> I was waiting for some things. Like, oh, okay, why are you working for Garad? Nothing. He's just like, most of the time, it feels like he's, he's like the evil henchman just taking orders from the main bad guy. Near the end, we kind of see a little bit, okay, he's taking the gold armor from Garad. But why <laughs> it's just like there's not a lot of explanation from him so it, i i felt like that character that was a missed up that was a big missed opportunity so you got to get a little bit more from nero so i wish there was 
more to him, but not in this film. <laughs> um, again, Cosmovision, I think that was what, what's it called. I was like, I don't know, I, I, that didn't work for me. Um, yeah, also, the armor didn't work. And I, I, I don't like the part where they don't explain why, why does it evolve from the first version of Saiyan War in the movie and then to the full, the full, uh, body armor like how does how does the armor evolve did i miss something I, I don't i don't remember them explaining it so yeah i wish there was some explanation for that you know to look back at the movie you know i felt like yeah there was a main villain and that's garage but i feel like really the main villain i think the way that they they're trying to show is that the main villain is more about the characters fighting within themselves you know say uh, trying to forgive himself not giving up Sienna fighting her own des destiny. So I think, yeah, Garot is the main screen, on screen, obvious villain. But, you know, the metaphorical villains are the ones that the characters are fighting within, at least the ones that are um, shown better fighting those kind of demons. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just looking into it too deep. <laughs> so who knows? Going back to one thing I did miss was um, the little scene between Seiya and Sienna when they're by the, I don't know, was that a lake or an ocean view or something like that? Um, that part reminded me of um, Seiya's boathouse where he lives in the anime. So it, it like, I was like, oh, did they do that on purpose or just coincidental that they they were filming it right by you no know, the, the lake or whatever, the ocean? Because that, remind, that definitely reminded me where in the anime where Seiya lives. So that was a nice, nice little thing. Yeah, the film is sloppy at times. The editing, no, the music, pretty generic, except the Pegasus Meter Punch um, theme song, uh, at least a, a rendition of it. And, you know, it's just, I, you know, trying to mix something mythical and then also like science stuff in it just didn't really work for me either. Um, it gets kind of thrown off from me because sometimes like I'll be watching Saint Seiya. I feel like I'm watching something Saint Seiya related, and all of a sudden I see like this sciencey stuff. It's like it's like yeah, just weird. Um, so I think definitely a lot of OG fans are not gonna like this if they watched it. Uh, some might, but that's okay. You know, all films are subjective, and you know you don't have to like every single movie you watch, regardless of whether or not you know they're from a your favorite franchise or anything like that. So. Uh, my overall rating, I usually rate stuff like out of like a five star for me, Knights of Zodiac, two and a half. Uh, but I want to know what are your thoughts on the movie? You know, have you had a chance to watch it? Please leave your comments below. And if you do like this video, please make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, uh, check out the podcast as well on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You no, know, please leave a review if you like the show as well. And we will be releasing more rewatch episodes. We're going to be rewatching episode three, four, five, pretty much every single episode from the anime series. So stay tuned. And until next time, keep burning your Cosmo.